okay? It's 480 volts, so we have a one inch prohibited approach boundary, 12 inch restricted approach boundary, 42 inch limited approach boundary. That's your shock hazard boundaries, okay? Has nothing to do with arc flash. So if it says 480, those boundaries remain constant for everything that's 480. Of course, the boundaries get bigger the higher the voltage, okay? The red line represents a flash protection boundary. That's a moving boundary. You know, sometimes it may be six inches away, and other times it may be 300 inches away. But in this case, we're just going to say it's at 82 inches, so we have about a 40-inch um, gap in between it, here and here, enough for somebody to stand. So outside the flash protection boundary and outside all the shock protection boundaries, you can have qualified people, unqualified people, doesn't matter. No PPE necessary because you're outside all of the boundaries. So if you need to put your barricades up, this is the furthest most hazard. That's where you've got to keep everybody out of. Once they enter the flash protection boundary, you can have qualified or unqualified people, okay? But they have to have arc ready clothing on, able to withstand whatever that rating is set at. So if it's category two PPE, they gotta have that on. Okay. Now we're gonna enter the shock protection boundaries. Here's where you can have qualified people. No, there's something. No unqualified people ever, unless they're escorted by a qualified person. So you can't have an unqualified person in the 42 inch area unless they're with a qualified person. Say you're training somebody to become a qualified person. You got a new apprentice or something, you're teaching them, they have to learn that somehow, okay? The restricted approach boundary, qualified people, you gotta have your shock protection techniques, equipment, you gotta have bolted ready tools and handling equipment, you gotta wear your insulated gloves from this point on. Um, no unqualified people ever within the restricted approach boundary. Okay, does that make sense? And prohibited approach boundary is basically the same thing. The only slight difference in definition is basically if you're within one inch of 480, just assume that you are touching it. You do arc over combined, combined with inadvertent movement. Okay, now. We had this covers off, we went and shut the panel off, we put our PP on, got our gloves on, came in here, we verified absence of voltage, did our three point check with the meter, we verified it's de energized, it's electrically safe working condition because it's locked and tagged out, de energized. What happens to all these rules? <coughs> Lock and tagged out, verified absence of voltage. Then you, you can take your PPE off. Yep, it all goes away. You are now working on a big piece of metal. It's no longer an energized component. Okay? So that's usually when you're wearing all your PPE and everything is just long enough to verify absence of voltage. Unless you're troubleshooting. If you're troubleshooting, they all apply. Okay? If the panel covers are on, nobody's interacting with the equipment, do these apply? No, well, that's, they're, they're standing, no. No, yeah. The 36 inch good, working that, distance is not there. You're not working, you're not. Yeah, you're not working, you're just walking by, that's why you can walk by a panel in the hallway and you don't have to dress up every time you walk down the hallway, okay? So, hold your blanket up as you walk. Exactly, exactly, a big flash blanket.